everyone, welcome to another rock pooling vlog on what I can safely say is probably the best weather for rock pooling I have ever seen. In fact, it might even be too hot. I have never known Scotland to be this unbelievably stunning and warm. I have never known Arbroath or anywhere on the coast of Scotland to not have even the slightest bit of breeze, but there is nothing here. So today we are gonna be doing another rock pooling. I can just feel it, it's gonna be a great day. It's great weather and we're gonna find some great species. So let's get started. transparent gobies yep they are almost completely transparent they are absolutely incredible make sure to subscribe because they will be featured in an upcoming video where you can learn a load more about their see-through lifestyle Just incredible how these tiny mycid shrimps are able to stand and hold their ground in the current and just so many of them floating in one rock pool. The video linked up in the corner now is where we have talked about mycid shrimps in a lot more detail and there's a load more video footage of these unbelievably cute shrimps. This is a great example of the life at the top of a rock versus the bottom. So this is the top and I flipped it and look, it's completely pink. It's Coraline Crusto's algae is covering that. How cool. These are actually eggs. And when we think of eggs, we probably think of birds or maybe crocodiles. Well, these haven't been left by tiny crocodiles, but by this snail. This is a dog whelk and those are dog whelk eggs. And this is what happens when you uh, basically sit in the sea. Now, I only do this on nice warm days, otherwise I'm wearing waterproof trousers, but yes, they uh, did not dry before I had to go out in public again. And uh, this is not the first time in this rock pulling trip you will see me emptying my wellies. My feet got very, very soggy. But you'll see later on the awesome species we managed to see, so you'll understand why I uh, decided just to get in the water. <laughs> If you ever hold an edible crab like this, he's sure to blow bubbles at you. I don't know why. And here is a tiny, weeny little butterfish. Ugh, they always swim off. Followed by an even smaller little tiny isopod that ended up on my finger. Hey, that tickles.
you notice how broad this crab's claws are, well that's because it's called a broad clawed porcelain crab. And here is a lovely beadlet anemone. A much larger individual of a butterfish now, but what do I always tell you? <laughs> they always find a way to swim away and uh, and hide in the rocks, which are, you know I don't blame them. I'm sure he wasn't happy to see a big old human looking at him, but they just have this gorgeous patterning that you can kind of try and see there. That uh, I really wish I could get a better video for you guys. From one difficult fish species to film to another but one that was such an incredible experience this is a sea stickleback one of the much rarer fish that you will find on the rocky shore i have never ever in my entire life seen one of these or i don't even know if i know someone that's seen one they are really cool really incredible and have this really striking side profile. These fish are known to be quite territorial and aggressive to other fish and that kind of showed because he did not care that I was trying to film him and I was trying to film him for so long. But this was such a deep rock pool that even if I put my arms the whole way in we still couldn't get that camera angle quite right but I think just these little snippets of maybe 30 minutes of footage that I managed to get uh, are still great to see because this is just such an incredible species to actually be able to see in the wild for myself and to get to share it and show you this cool fish species is just such a joy. To film this fish I, I basically sat properly waist deep in a rock pool and uh, so it's no, no surprise that the wellies are getting uh, emptied again. Yet a, another wiggling fish but this one actually stuck around because this is a five bearded rockling. You can tell that because he has five little wiggly points coming off of his face. One is hidden under his chin. Part of this seaweed has turned white because it's bleached. That is a defence mechanism against too much sun. So the seaweed is even telling us that it's a really, really sunny day and uh, it's helping protect it against the sun during summer so that it reflects a lot of the light back and doesn't damage the cells. What's this butterfish number escape? Five, six, seven, nine, ten? A million? So I'm ending today's rock pulling vlog by videoing this crow. I got asked in a Q&A session a while ago, I'll link up to that if you want to know more about me as a marine biologist or me as a uh, rock puller, but um, someone asked about if there's any terrestrial creatures that utilise the rocky shore and in the UK there are lots of birds that use it to look for food and particularly uh, ravens, crows and all that kind of group look for snails and I've seen them actually drop them from a great height onto the tarmac of a car park and then uh, go and eat all the lovely juicy snail inside the uh, cracked shell. So this crow was looking for a, a lovely tasty snack which I'm sure it found because these are incredibly smart birds. <laughs> Well, that's me done. I had an absolute blast with this rock pulling session. There are tons more rock pulling coming up in the future, so make sure to subscribe. I also usually do a lot more face-to-face -face talking, but today the wind did pick up and all of my face talking audio was completely ruined. Don't worry, I'm working on it. But, um, so I hope you enjoyed it anyway, and I, ah, oh, that sea stickleback is gonna stick in my mind for ages. I will see you back next Wednesday with another video. Thanks everyone. Bye.